Good morning, and welcome to Love, Hope, and Faith. My name is Heather Murdoch, and I'm just delighted to be with you today. In fact, I've missed you. Last week, we were not on because of the snowstorm, and we didn't have any programming, so it's been a couple weeks, and I'm just really excited to be back, and I have such an amazing guest today. It's just going to be phenomenal, but I did. I wanted to open the show with some scripture today, and also wanted to remind you that um, for those of you who may be watching for the first time, which I hope every day I pray that there's new viewers uh, for the show so that... So you can see the glory of God and see how he changes lives. And um, so if you're new to the show, this show is all about Jesus Christ and how he changes lives, how he redeems, how he brings um, beauty out of ashes. And uh, I've been reading a lot in the book of John, which is such an amazing, amazing book of the Bible. It's one of the Gospels. And um, just reading about how Jesus just reaches right into people's lives, right where they are, and just changes them. And he has a plan for each one of us, and he loves you so much, and he just has something great planned for you. And if we can just reach out to him and accept the relationship with him and it's all about the relationship it's all about you know i i people say oh you know are you religious i i don't really like to use the word religious it's all about the relationship and um that he's my everything and through him um i'm able to have the the type of relationships with others because of him that um, are healthy and good and um the scripture that came to my mind today from the story that you're going to hear from my guest is from is from John is from Luke. I'm sorry, Luke 15. And the reason I want to share this scripture before we start the show today is because um, how relentlessly will God pursue us? He pursues us um, to the ends of the earth, and he um, he has made that promise in one of his one of his um, scriptures here in Luke 15 three through seven, and it says, "Then Jesus told them this parable: Suppose one of you has a hundred sheep and loses one of them." Does he not leave the ninety-nine in the open country and go after the lost sheep until he finds it? And when he finds it, he joyfully puts it on his shoulders and goes home. Then he calls his friends and neighbors together and says, Rejoice with me, I have found my lost sheep. I tell you that in the same way there will be more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents than over ninety-nine righteous persons who do not need to repent. And I love that. That's so powerful because that's who God is. Mm. He is a God that goes after each one of us, pursues us. And um, and this story today is going to be a, is going to be a great example of God's pursuit and God's plan and God's grace and God's mercy in the life of a sinner <laughs> and how He transformed that life. And and I'm just going to introduce Brandon. Hi, Brandon. Good morning. This is Pastor Brandon Stearns. I should say pastor, so people know that you are a pastor. And um, it's, I just want to tell the viewers how I how I found you, actually, because this is the first time we've met. We talked on the phone last night. I actually had a cancellation, I told you. And you're and I thought, oh, my gosh, how am I going to get a guest in, you know, the day before the show? Mm -hmm. And your, your name just came to my mind because a friend, a mutual friend who I went to high school with, um, actually contacted me on the Love, Hope, and Faith Facebook page and said that you would be a wonderful guest because you have a powerful story, Amen. a powerful testimony. Amen. And um, when I called you yesterday to find out what you're about and I got to hear your story and it really is a powerful testimony and testament to God and um, how amen. he just can take a broken life and make it brand new mm -hmm. amen so tell me about yourself well first it's a privilege even just to have a, a platform to even share his name um, for me uh, it's it's been um, such a blessed road I mean sometimes I think back on uh, why he did come and find me you know why uh, as others died on in in the streets on uh you know overdosing and car wrecks and and i think about sometimes you know when what 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 grace was that that found me that they died next to me in a sense you know out in the streets but god saved my life and was gracious enough to be patient with me and so um there's a scripture that uh, there's two scriptures that really bless me and one is uh where there's much forgiveness there's much love mm -hmm. and so uh that's always been something um that has been a, a, a strong scripture in my heart. Um, also, in Psalms chapter 30, it says, Oh, Lord, you've saved my soul from going down to the pit. Yes, I love that. Yeah, I love that. So, and you were in the pit. You were in prison. Yeah, um, it, it started uh, earlier than that, but um, it ended up that that was the actual, I called it uh, Bible school, but mm -hmm, mm -hmm. some people call it prison. But, uh, you know, I told my grandpa in visiting in uh, the county, I said, you know, there's two things I can do. I can either go learn how to be a better criminal 
or I can give my uh, my whole life to the Lord and, and, and go and learn about God. And so basically what I call it is, is I went to Bible school. Amen. That's excellent. <laughs> I love it. Oh, yeah. I love it. So let's tell the viewers how you how you ended up there. Let's take it back to the beginning a little bit. Well, for me, I, I um, you know, a lot of times I think people try to put a track record on how families, how we, get, we can get messed up. You know, mm -hmm. I, I grew up in a, a very loving home. I was definitely above average as far as um, needs were always met. I had hardworking parents, um, very loving parents. You know, we, I had an above average life. We got to travel, um, a lot of good things. Uh, my brother and myself were the only two kids. And, um, and so I was taught that Jesus was the only way at a really young age. And I mean, I can even look back at a picture of about, I think about eight years old with a tie and on my way to church, mm -hmm. but um, and gave my heart to the Lord when I was about 12 years old. And so when I hit about 15 and a half, my life started to make a, a wrong turn. And that's when I began to uh, drink alcohol pretty heavily on the weekends. Um, tried some marijuana at times. Uh, that never was really my thing, but I really got into drinking pretty heavily for about two or three years. Um, Is this something your parents were aware of? Not really. It yeah. was more of a secret uh, yeah. type of thing. And then after that, it became more uh, open. But... Um, for me, what happened was uh, I graduated high school, and I was always a, a person that was very insecure in who I was, uh, uh, afraid to be who I was, was always trying to be somebody else. And so for me, that's what I found inside of drugs was uh, I found a, an easy way for me to feel good about myself. Yes, and, that false and, confidence. Yeah, that mm -hmm. false, it's a false euphoria. Yeah. Um, uh, <clears throat> and for me, what happened was I found that in methamphetamine, and so when I started to do that, it went downhill really quickly. Um, like I said, my family was just, uh, I put my, my poor mother and my family through torment for years. Um, my drug addiction, uh, ultimately, ultimately uh, I, I had gotten married. Um, my wife, which uh, she is just, uh, I put her through much too. But now uh, I, what happened was I actually lost my wife. I, I lost almost everything that I had you in my life. You had a child too, right, at yeah. that point? Yeah, yeah at that point uh, I had a son. <coughs> Um, at that point in time, and, and you know, we, we a lot of times we think that you know this marriage. If I get married, or if I get, uh, if I have a kid, or if I get a job, or we look for some sort of way to make us feel like we'll quit drugs if we have something more important. Well, right. all those things never worked for me. Yeah. And my life just spiraled downhill. I lost my wife. Um, I lost my vehicle. I, I couldn't keep a job. I was in and out of uh, in and out of jail. I was uh, in and out of drug institutions. Mm -hmm. Um, and I just, uh, the Lord spared my life, uh, I mean, just quickly. I mean, just one time I, I actually got kicked in my ribs, and I was within about two hours of death because I bled internally for about seven hours um, sitting in a jail cell because I got arrested after that, um, that time that I had gotten kicked. And uh, it was just a, uh, just a flat-out miracle that I actually woke up and did not just bleed completely out in that jail cell and die that day, and that was by the grace of God. Amen. And... Um, he was pursuing you, just like I'm talking about, with the, the, the lost sheep, just yeah. pursuing you. Amen. Yeah, he was. Um, and I thank God for that mercy yes. and for not giving up on me. Um, after that, it was immediately right back into drug addiction, right back into methamphetamine. Uh, selfish, didn't care about anybody but myself. Mm -hmm. But that drug does that to you. Yeah. It's, it's, I mean, I believe I mean, methamphetamine mm -hmm. is uh, it's Satan. Yeah. I believe. It changes people. Yeah, know? most definitely. Yeah. It's uh, the devil's dust. Yes, absolutely. And so to answer your question, uh, how did I get to prison? I, you know, I was always trying to do things to fit in. And so whatever it needed to be done for me to fit in, to make myself fit in that crowd, uh, I would do it. And I was always trying to be the hero. Mm -hmm. And so um, one day what, what landed me a prison term was uh, I went to go um, help out a friend that their mother and their sister were disrespected by a man. And it was just, there's, there's a lot to it, but I ended up kicking in uh, a gentleman and I kicked a door in and... Um, and from that point on, uh, we were basically on the run uh, for about, I think it was about six days. I was on the run. It was count, just about counties most wanted, I believe, at that point in time. Uh, they were looking for me for uh, robbery, burglary, and a grand theft auto charge. That was on um, so another issue. And, uh, and it was almost like GPS. It was like everywhere I went, they were on me, and it was time. God was saying it was over. It's done. It's time. And... Um, just before that, I had cried out. Not too long before that, I, I went out on a deck with my mom and overlooked the stars. And I said, Mom, I said, if God's who he is, I said, I don't want to be who this person is anymore. And I want you to pray with me. And we wept. And, and I believe that was when the Lord heard me. And it wasn't long after that that I landed a prison term. 
And, uh, and the day that I got arrested, I just leaned my head against the police window. And I said, Lord, I don't like who I am. And I don't want to be this person anymore. Mm -hmm. And just please change me. I need you. And that was on May 1st, 2004, uh, that I gave my heart completely over to the Lord Jesus. The scripture says, humble yourself before the Lord and he will lift you up. Mm -hmm. And I see that humbling. Um, we're actually going to take a break. It's a good, good place to take a little break here. We're going to take a break. A three-minute break. We'll be right back. You're watching Amador County's local television network, TSPN. Welcome back to Love, Hope, and Faith, and I hope you've um, been enjoying this first segment. It's been an amazing story, and a story of true redemption and uh, through Jesus. And I'm really honored that you're here today, and we left off where you were sharing about you had your head against the window of the police car, mm -hmm. crying out to God. What mm -hmm. happened next? Uh, from that point on, I was just uh, very scared. I didn't know I had a lot of enemies that I had created in uh, the drug life, and uh, and I knew that they were chomping at the bit to get me, mm -hmm. so I was very scared. Uh, didn't know what was ahead of me. I was looking at uh, ultimately 12 years, um, but God, by His grace, I ended up with uh, six years mm -hmm. with uh, half time. And when I was uh, shipped off to the uh, prison down here, uh, I walked in and I thought to myself, well, what did I get myself into this time? And, um, and I just was crying out and asking, you know, God just to go before me and protect me. Um, got down to the prison, this is what amazes me, is uh, I was crying out, Lord, I, I don't want to be in a place where I'm going to get hurt, you know, with a celly that's violent or with something that's going to be, you know, uh, just protect me. And of all people, I ended up with a Christian celly. Mm -hmm. And a celly means cellmate. Yeah, cellmate. Okay. Yeah. And so, um, and, and those cells aren't very big. And so when that door shut, um, the only companion I had besides God, and I was very young in the Lord, uh, was that Christian Selly and just so happened that there was a Bible hidden and stuffed down in the side of the bunk, mm -hmm. which is like unheard of in a reception. You don't get books. And so, the Lord's provision is yeah, amazing. It was amazing. And, um, and for me, that, that one of the first miraculous things that the Lord did for me was I was su uh, super claustrophobic. I mean, I was like going to lose my mind in that cell that night and uh, start kicking the door. And, I, and, I, and my cell, he said, well, why don't you get up and pray to the Lord? Mm. And I got up and laid on my bed, and I just, I prayed that night, and I, I asked God to help me. And, and he did. He delivered me immediately from it. And for the next five days, I, I did nothing but have, you know, I mean, the fun that you could have in the, you know, yeah. <laughs> according yes. to the Relative, situation yeah. that you're in. Mm -hmm. But um, from there, I got put into a 40-man dorm, and there was a Bible study that was started. Um, and that just began to escalate, and I began to just purge myself from language. And, uh, you know, the Lord purged me, not me. But, um... I began to sanctify myself and set myself apart to God. And I, I can remember telling the Lord, I said, you know, Lord, I'm not asking to be anybody important. I don't want to, I'm not asking to be a pastor. I'm not asking to be, uh, I'll sit on a construction site and I'll pound nails and I'll talk about how Jesus has delivered me from drugs and alcohol. Uh, but I said, nevertheless, you do what you want to do with my life. Uh, I'm yours. And so, um, funny thing is, is he usually does the opposite of what we ask, but, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I, from that point on, uh, we were going through a Bible study, and uh, and I was just just entrenching myself in the Word of God, and just and and, and asking the Holy Spirit just to uh, reveal to me who, uh, you know, the Lord is. And um, after that, we got put into a, another wing of the prison. And when we got put into that wing of the prison, uh, the cells were supposedly smaller than the first ones that I had a hard time with. And this was another miracle that the Lord really just showed Himself to me at that point in my life was. Uh, when we got in there, I was very nervous. I was praying again, God, I need you. And that gas door shut behind me, and, and that's not a very welcoming mm -hmm. sound. Uh, and when it did, I, I just put my bag on the floor, and I said, Lord, I need you. And I looked up, and when I looked up on top of the ceiling, there was a cross that had been penciled in the ceiling, and it said, Trust in the Lord. Oh, I love it. I love it. Yeah. Amen. You know, it's so, it's so interesting. Um, friends and I were just talking last week about Paul, Paul mm -hmm. from the Bible. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, Jesus calls us to just worship, to, to, to live our lives for him mm -hmm. and to focus on him solely. And, mm -hmm. you know, that we, we make him a part of our life, but he is life. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Amen. And, and think about Paul and why would God allow one of his beloved disciples, the apostle Paul, to be in prison and to die? Mm -hmm. You know, wasn't didn't he die in prison? I mean, or uh, well, uh, he was definitely in prison. Yeah, yeah, and, and tortured prison, and yeah. all those. Yeah, things. he was definitely beaten. Yeah, in, exactly. In yeah. And I thought about that, and it reminds me of your story because um, 
there you are, you're in prison, and you have mm-hmm. nothing else to do but totally worship, praise, mm-hmm. focus, learn, dwell in Him richly, just Amen. like the Bible says. Amen. And I mean that, and then you said you had this peace that just passes understanding, mm-hmm. you know, that peace, where you hear you are claustrophobic, and you mm-hmm. have just that peace, that just the peace of God that you can't explain. Yeah. And I mean, it's almost like, I want to be in prison so I can experience that, <laughs> you know, not really, but yeah. I'm just saying, it's like the perfect storm, it's like the mm-hmm. perfect place to be where all you have is Him, to yeah. lean on Him, and that's what He wants us to do. Yeah, and that's kind of what amazes me about the Lord, too, is if you go through the book and you kind of look back into the, the prophets and, the, uh, and a lot of the Old Testament, even in the New Testament, uh, you find that when these men were sometimes at their hardest hour, Yes. you know, uh, being in prison, being in captivity, being, yes. uh, you know, shackled up in the inner courts of the prison in the New Testament, and, and God shakes the place, and God comes in that place, you know, God wants to, God, God is not bound by walls, God no. is so intimate, He wants to be personal, He wants to reveal Himself to every individual, but it amazes me that a lot of the experiences that we have are in our time of our worst tor- turmoil. Yes, yes. And, and I can just, remember that. Yeah, I'm sorry. I was gonna say no, just like okay. just like reading in John. I mean, mm-hmm. and it's all over the Bible, like you said. Just God just comes right and meets us in our in our deepest despair. Yeah, and just yeah. change and turns the light on. Amen. Yeah, you know? he sure does. Uh, and that's kind of. And then how to have that cross there and trust in the Lord. What a beautiful um, work of God. Yeah, right was, there where you needed it. It was something that was so comfortable to me that it 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 it, it gave me such a peace. And then yes. I began to stand on a scripture. Uh, out of uh, Isaiah, I believe it's 26, 3, it says, the mind that stays focused on the Lord will stay in perfect peace. Mm, and I yeah. actually pinned that on the wall. And uh, and I took the upper bunk, which like the lower bunk is gold when okay. you're in jail. Okay. <laughs> so, But I took the upper bunk because it was <clears throat> something that the Lord was close to me about. And mm-hmm. I wrote that scripture on the wall. And what began to happen was the guard came by one day and he looked inside and he said, man, I need some of that. Really? Yeah, and it's so Amen. it's like That's it began awesome. to be infectious, and, yes. and so um, yes. and then the Lord took me to a, a whole nother level uh, in that very wing of the prison. One day we learned sign language, and we were just that's how you kind of communicate through the windows, and we were just talking about biblical things and always sharing about the Lord and just entrenching myself in God and learning about Jesus. And uh, and I remember one day I was doing some sign language through a window, and the Holy Spirit just kind of came down on me, and I was like. Wow, this is much bigger and much more real than I ever really even imagined. This is, I mean, it, like, it's that experience. Mm-hmm. See, people, that's what people need. They need to come into a place where they have uh, a, an experience. They don't need a, a religious yes. uh, uh, um, <laughs> testimony about how God is, uh, was. And it, they need to come into a place where they come in contact yes. with a God who's alive. Exactly. When you come into a contact with God, you will never be the same. Oh, amen. And amen. Preach it. <laughs> Yeah, Absolutely. So. I mean, that's, and, and you know, we were talking earlier off camera about, you know, when I said, when I started doing the show, I didn't feel qualified, and you said you've struggled with things like that, like, why me, God, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, my religion may not always, or my theology may not always be perfect, mm-hmm. but my, but you can't argue with my experience. Yeah. My experience of God is mine. It's personal. It's real. It's, it's transformational. Right. It's, it's it, you know what I'm saying? And sure. I'll stand, I'll die to that. Sure. <laughs> you know? Yeah and, yeah, and that's what I think we're lacking uh, in people's lives, you know, um, safely saying so, you know, I, just my opinion is I think that we lack that contact with God. Mm-hmm. Uh, my wife, I used to make it about a feeling. It's not about a feeling. No. It's about faith exactly. in, in God's word exactly. first. Exactly. Uh, feelings will come after, uh, and feelings can fool you. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I used to tell my wife, did you feel the presence of God in church today? How did you not feel the presence of God? And I made it about this feeling, and the Lord rebuked me. And the Lord told me it's not about a feeling. He said it's about my word. Exactly. And so I repented, and then I repented to my wife, and uh, and it wasn't but two weeks after that that she was driving down the road and cried out to God and had an experience in the cab of her vehicle that caused her to almost pull over on the side of the road. I mean, the Holy Spirit just dropped down in the cab of her vehicle, and she had that experience. Because, you know, I love that you said that. I love that, because so many times people will say, I just don't feel God. I just don't feel His closeness. Mm-hmm. God doesn't change. Mm-hmm. God's the God who always was, always will be, and always mm-hmm. is. And He doesn't change just because we're not feeling it doesn't mean He's not there. He's right. more than a feeling so thank you for saying that yeah most definitely we have to stand on his scripture his truth his word amen and I think that that's why as Christians sometimes we go through these dry seasons is because God wants us to come to a place where we aren't reliant on just feeling him but we know that if his Bible says it yes then that's the way it is and nothing's going to move it nothing's going to shake it nothing's going to change it that it's forever written heaven and earth will pass away but this word is perfect in every way exactly exactly okay good so getting back to your story 
So here you are. You see the scripture or the the cross and pencil mm -hmm. in the ceiling, mm -hmm. and and uh, you, and then you got changed to a different uh, different yard, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Which was a place you had been praying to go to. Which why? Which was a miracle in itself because yeah. it was close to home, close to home. Uh, and okay. people were saying, "Well, you're never going to get to that spot." And I just said, well, "Okay, well, I'll just pray to the Lord." Mm -hmm. And uh, sure enough, just so happened, uh, there was a, a large opening that came into that prison, and uh, and there I was sitting on that yard, and uh, and from that point it was just. Um, that's just uh, so many things that he has done to reveal himself and to bring himself into person into into my life that I mean <laughs> let's talk a little bit about you know I, as you know and the viewers know I talk a lot about celebrate recovery mm -hmm. um, which is a um, if you're watching for the first time is mm -hmm. a recovery Christ-centered recovery program mm -hmm. for addictions but also for people with just life's issues mm -hmm. grief financial issues mm -hmm. divorce any issues but it's also great like I said for mm -hmm. addictions mm -hmm. and so I want to touch on that a little bit because mm -hmm. it's kind of close to my heart mm -hmm. how did you deal with the chemical addiction while you were in prison and God did he remove that totally from you yeah that's the amazing part is you know um the way the Holy Spirit has worked in my life, mm -hmm. how the Lord has done it in my life, is um, if we will commit ourselves to Him at any cost and give ourselves wholly over to God, what will happen is, is God will begin to break things off of our life. And for me, uh, I had to get real with God and get real with myself about why I use drugs mm -hmm. and why drugs mm -hmm. were uh, a crutch for me. Because if you see, we can we can trim the fruit off of things, which is the outer part of, of a lot of the things that we see in people's lives. But The pruning. I, yeah, the yeah. pruning. But mm -hmm. I want to get to the heart issue yes. of where the Holy Spirit needs to get down in somebody's exactly. life exactly. and fill the void that is yes. causing them to reach out to alcohol, to reach out to drugs, you know, to yes. reach out to the things. Because the, the core issue is that there's something that is a, a need that needs to be fixed. Yes. Exactly. And, and people need to come to the understanding that uh, you don't have to white knuckle it the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. God delivered me from drugs and alcohol. I don't wake up every day going, I hope I don't use. I say by the grace of God that I stand yes. and, I, and let no man say he stand, least he fall. But I know that I am delivered from drugs and alcohol. I, 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 I strive to... Uh, to not only I live in the fullness of His presence and yes. walking in God, and that that's more than enough. And Amen. and because He healed me from uh, my eating disorder, mm -hmm. but. It, it, exactly what you said. He went into the, where the, the eating disorder was a byproduct of the deeper need that wasn't mm -hmm. filled in me, mm -hmm. the lack of love I felt mm -hmm. of myself, and mm -hmm. you know, just lack of love. Right. And he went in and he filled the cracks in my heart. He filled that void with mm -hmm. his love, and that cured me from the eating disorder. Yeah. Because it wasn't. I didn't. I wasn't empty anymore. I wasn't trying to. I was so busy trying to fill it with mm -hmm. drugs, alcohol, whatever mm -hmm. it was for you. For me, it was perfectionism. Mm -hmm. He filled that need, mm -hmm. and so therefore. Amen. The byproduct and, went away. And there's the liberty mm -hmm. that lies therein mm -hmm. because you, you can be content in where you are with God and you don't, you're not affected by your circumstances around you exactly. either. God wants us <clears> to be <throat> in a place where we're so secure in Him that our, our atmosphere around us mm -hmm. does not dictate our feelings, our emotions, our relationship with yes. Him. It is solely in continual connection with Him. Yes. You know, and for me, that's what the Lord did for me was uh, He took that out of me and replaced it, like you said, with Him. Yes. Um, and and so when I counsel or deal with people that are having issues with alcohol, uh, I, I I a lot of times the Lord will go back to their childhood. Mm -hmm. He'll go back to a hurt. He'll go back to a bitter root. He'll go back to something that's causing. Uh, let's let's if you clip the root, the fruit will fall. That's right. On that note, we'll be right back in three minutes. You're watching Amador County's local television network, TSPN. What a show. Welcome back to Love, Hope, and Faith. And we have some great conversation off camera. And before we took a break, you were talking about the fruit mm -hmm. and clipping that fruit. So mm -hmm. please continue. Uh, well, one thing that I try to do is, is if somebody comes to me and they tell me I have an alcohol problem, uh, I can spend all day trying to keep them out of the bar and keep them away from acquaintances and keep them away from... Um, uh, the things and try to trim that fruit off of them, but I'm, I, I want to talk to, I want to get to their, the root issue. If we can get underneath the soil and get down into the hidden things yes. that are in our life that cause us to bear that fruit, then we can lay that ax to the root. Yes. And if you lay the ax to the root, the fruit will just quit. Yes. And so uh, for me, I like to get personal and get real and allow the Holy Spirit to use me to get down in there and get um, if we'll get vulnerable with God and why we're using drugs and alcohol yes, and make ourselves uh, vulnerable to God, you know, the Bible says that which is uh, as manifest light is made light mm -hmm. in the book of Ephesians. And so when we get down yes. into the dark places of our heart, 
will find that deliverance and we won't need to chase the fruit down anymore. The root will be gone and God will grow new seed in us. And if you look at society, not, I mean, this could be a whole other show, but a whole other topic, but if you look at society and the decay of our society, mm -hmm. and it's it's all that what you're mm -hmm. saying. It's that it's people are hurting inside. Mm -hmm. Everyone is hurting on one level or another and it's manifesting in some in, in different ways, mm -hmm. a variety of ways. Mm -hmm. But our society is lacking God. Mm -hmm. That is what's wrong with our society. That's yeah. why people are, that's why this continued abuse, um, you know, the societal um, issues that we face, um, you know, all those things are, could be diagnosed lack of God. Mm -hmm. And God can, and, and, yeah. Lack of hope. Lack of hope. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And abuse and neglect and all these things that happen, they just break right. your heart. You know, right. it's pain. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. And that's what I find a lot of times um, in ministry at the church is the Lord, like I was telling you off camera, was the, the Lord will go back into people's lives mm -hmm. and go back to those hurts and go back to those uh, failures, go back to those times that they had been beaten or maybe it was molested or maybe it was whatever it is that they had gone through mm -hmm. that's causing them to either lash out in anger or lash out in yes. alcohol or drugs mm -hmm. and, and, and find some acceptance. And God's saying, I'm right here. It's that God-shaped hole only He can fill. Yeah, amen. So you were in the yard you that you were prayed to be in, mm -hmm. in the yard meaning that you just got moved to a different prison mm -hmm. and so tell me what happened there uh from there it was just um divine appointment after divine appointment um the highlights of of some of those was i actually bumped into my pastor uh uh, uh who discipled me at that point in time um and i was he, he explains that i was you know um, very persistent i wanted to know about god i had questions like uh, nobody's business. I wanted to know you were hungry. God. Mm -hmm. And so uh, he actually ran for me for quite some time until the Lord told him, hey, I want you to work with him. And it was just a real divine appointment that, you know, it, it just snowballed into in being introduced to my pastor that was going to be accepting me back into the community where I was at and him taking my phone calls while I was in prison once a week, you know, when he's got a family and a church that he's building. Um, and so it was just the divine appointments that led up to that time. And, 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 and my, uh, uh, you know, Pastor Mitch that was discipling me at that time uh, believed in me. Mm -hmm. And and yes. gave me chances to uh, you know to, to start my gifting that God had put in me. It's not my gift; it's His gift. That's right. But if we don't have somebody that is willing to look down inside of us yes. and see potential, yes, to pull it out of us, to pour into you and invest in you, right? Yes. And yes. and so I had just phenomenal uh, divine appointments. Um, Pastor Mitch was just uh, he spent ample time with me, opened up major doors. The Lord used these men to open up doors it's all his work but without somebody to yield yes and be available uh without these men that were in my life that god had placed over me which were good sound teachers yes that, that corrected me when i needed to be corrected yes. that guided <laughs> me when i needed that guidance and gave me opportunity i wouldn't be where i'm at and don't you think going back to what you said about um about someone who just invested in you and poured into you and and um you know just mm -hmm. change your life don't you think that so many of the men and women in prisons that's what they're lacking they didn't yeah. have anyone that ever believed in them. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, that's just hit me. Hit me when you said that. That that's just that's the state of most people who are there. Yeah, you're you're absolutely right. And I'll tell you, this is something that I find the Lord laying on my heart to tell people, in sincerity, when I am proud of them before paying the sacrifice that it takes to walk with Christ, because it's not an easy walk. Mm -hmm. you, 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 we must carry our cross. There's there's yes. a lot of bad teaching out there that it's all going to be just great well it mm -hmm. is going to be great because you're going to have peace and joy in your trial but you're going to uh you're going to also walk through hardships mm -hmm. i mean it's just that simple um but for uh, for me um you know i it's uh i kind of lost my train of thought there what no, I was we're, saying. Talking, we're talking about i've said the the people lacking people investing right. in them and believing in them right and and that's what i find is this is when people really make the effort and you can see the sincere effort that somebody's going to make for to walk with god yeah and I'll, I'll tell them sincerely that I'm proud of them. Mm -hmm. And the impact that I find those words having on a soul mm -hmm. is huge because I think that there's a lot of people in society that aren't hearing somebody say, I believe in you. That's right. And that you're doing a good job That's and right. to keep it up. That's right. And, and you're going to be okay. And, and, and you know, you're making the sacrifice. Giving hope, like you said earlier. Giving yeah. that hope. And, offering hope. Yeah. Exactly. So here you are. You you know you're being just blessed with these men. Um, you know, discipling you. Mm -hmm. I guess you could say mm -hmm. discipling you. Yeah. So then what? You got out of prison. Right. Um, I got out of prison and, and just phenomenal doors had opened up. I mean, I don't know how. Did, many, did you know in prison that you wanted to be a pastor? Did you get the call there, or was it after when you got out, or how that happened? No. As a matter of fact, uh, 
God kind of had a way of keeping that in secret. I had a, a very strong um, chase for the voice of God. To mm -hmm. under, I wanted to hear the voice of God. I wanted to hear what God sounded like. I, I needed every bit of who He was. Mm -hmm. I was after Him. Mm -hmm. And uh, and and so that's kind of like I, I was sensing a little bit of some calling in the prophetic uh, gifting, but uh, but I wasn't didn't have any clear direction. I was just uh, humbled in the fact that coming out of prison, uh, you know, Pastor Kim. Uh, he he just welcomed me with open arms and said, "Hey, you know what? I want you to work at my altar. You know, you're welcome. I believe he believed in me too. Yes. And and uh, and these men gave opportunities to somebody that most. Uh, I want to be careful in saying this that some uh, wouldn't give a chance to. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, um, somebody coming out with tattoos on them and and coming out of prison and trusting them. I mean, before much uh, time had passed, I was actually carrying the tithe basket for the church. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was a man that of no integrity." Well, burglary had been one of your <laughs> yeah. crimes, right? Yeah. 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 So. Yeah. God restored you. Fully 100%, restored. percent. Hundred percent. Yeah. And you know, when you said you were just chasing hard after God, what I thought of is King David, a mm -hmm. man after God's own heart, mm -hmm. right? And King David was not a perfect man. Mm -hmm. He had look at all the wives he had and affairs mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. the whole thing, mm -hmm. you know. And he was not a great father to mm -hmm. his his sons, mm -hmm. you know. And so, but which is, you know, just to say that he wasn't perfect, but he was a man after God's heart. Yeah. He craved it. He yearned for it. He chased after it. And that reminds me of what you of what you were doing where you were and probably where you still are. Sounds like. Yeah. Uh, everybody's always in process. I mm -hmm. It doesn't matter. I, I believe that no matter how many years you've been walking with God, you will always be a process. And God, uh, Paul said, you know, it's not that I have attained, but I'm reaching for that upper call. Yes. I'm pressing forward and I'm going, I'm going for something bigger. Uh, and so there's always more that God has for us. If, if we, we can't get content, we've got to press forward and go after God with everything. And if we will do that, God says in his word, if you seek me with all of your heart, you will find me. Yes. And so, uh, and, and God is a uh, keeper of his word. Mm-hmm. Amen. Yeah. Amen. So you, so here you are now in the church. You're, mm -hmm. uh, you're working alongside the pastors at that mm -hmm. point. Um, when did you know that you were going to start pastoring? Uh, that came quite some time later. I was actually working, and um, um, I had been. Uh, the Lord had give, honored me, and, and, and the pastor of the church had honored me, and I was actually just recently put in a position on the elder board, and I was spraying because I do pest control. And I was spraying one day, and I was walking up the back of this hill, and I just, I heard a voice inside of me say, I want you to start a church. And I'd never heard God like that. And it was just, uh, it wasn't the big emotional feeling and knowing God. It was just, it was just the voice of God. Yes. And so I, I stopped right in my tracks, and I said, okay, well, we'll put that in our back pocket. And we'll just hold on to that for a while and let you confirm it, Lord. Because that was something that was so beyond my ability. And so beyond where I thought I could even be at. Yeah, so beyond logic. Oh, yeah, yeah and that's yeah. the way God works. Exactly. God calls us to things that are uh, much much bigger than us that he can only bring to pass. That's because it's all him. It's yeah. not us. It's not about yeah. us. Right. But I wanted to take you back, and I'm sorry. Um, I just remembered a very important part of your story you shared with me last night that I think is really mm -hmm. going to touch someone mm -hmm. watching this show today, mm -hmm. and that is that you were suicidal. Mm-hmm. Can you just take us back to that point? Because it's almost a good place to go mm -hmm. to right now. Because here you are now. You, God says you're going to start a church. But you were at such a low point, mm -hmm. even before you went to prison, right? Mm -hmm. That you, you held a gun to your Absolutely. head. Absolutely. Can you tell us about that? Absolutely. I was in such torment and such bondage and such uh, a place that I was, um, uh, I didn't want to live. Mm -hmm. I was tired of being tired. I was tired of not knowing how to get past this drug addiction. And I literally went out on a ridge. Uh, with a nickel-plated 45 caliber uh, pistol, left a note with my wife and my ring on it, uh, and I, by the grace of God, I didn't do it. Uh, I broke down, started crying, and came back in and threw the gun on the counter. Um, and I thank God to this day that he did not let me do that because mm -hmm. I, I would not be sitting in heaven. <laughs> no, absolutely yeah. not. No, absolutely Absolutely not. And so I just wanted people to know that that's how, that's, we talk about the pits of despair, mm -hmm. the pit. You mentioned mm -hmm. that in Psalms, I think, er, early on. Um, he just reached into that pit and just pulled you out. And yeah. it was a process. And in some cases, it was a process. And some, in, in some parts of your story, it was immediate deliverance. Mm -hmm. And that's how God works, too. Right. Um, but so for anyone who's watching that, um, it's just at that point, because it's a hard life without yeah. the Lord in it. You yeah. know, and um, it's a hard life even with the Lord in it. Like you said, He doesn't promise us a life filled with um, a life absent of trial. Our life is going to have trial. Right. Yeah, and it's uh, it's it's if we're willing to pay the cost to walk in the will of God, mm -hmm. the price is absolutely rewarding. Yes. 
I mean, you're coming in contact with the creator of the heavens and the earth. Mm -hmm. If you'll pay the cost, he'll do his part. And that's what I was saying in the beginning of the show. Is like he made each one of us. We're not here by accident. Mm -hmm. Each one of us, no matter where you are right now and you're suffering, each mm -hmm. one of us has a plan and a purpose attached to our lives that's God-given. Absolutely. And if we'll just open ourselves up to him, you know, absolutely. like you did. Yeah, absolutely. Who and knew? Look, I mean, just who knew, you know, where you'd be now. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah, and, and that's the thing that I think everybody needs to know is that it doesn't matter where you're at. Paul was a murderer of Christians. Mm -hmm. uh, he had a zeal that was killing Christians. He thought he was doing God a favor. Yes. Uh, it doesn't matter whether you're on what drug, alcohol. Jesus is bigger than any of those things. Exactly. Amen. You know, and Amen. so it doesn't matter where we're at. God is always capable and able, and his arm is long enough to come down and reach and grab you uh, on a street corner. Uh, it doesn't matter where you're at. Amen. Yeah, Amen. So. Good. Okay. Well, we're coming down to our last segment. We're going to take a three-minute ad break. Please stay tuned. We'll be right back. You're watching Amador County's local television network, TSPN. I feel like I should be encouraging my viewers to uh, take notes during these shows because there's been some great things, and I hope you have taken notes, at least mental notes. And um, I know that the viewers are being blessed right now by the show and the things you've said and shared and um, the scriptures you've shared, and so thank you for that. Um, one part I really want to get to uh, is your marriage because I know you married, you and your wife got married, mm -hmm. she got pregnant, then you got married, but here mm -hmm. you were, you had this, this life of just living off... Mm -hmm on yeah. your own terms, and um, you actually divorced, right, mm -hmm. during that time? Mm -hmm. And so, but God restored your marriage, because mm -hmm. now you're remarried to your wife. Absolutely. Tell me more about that. Uh, basically, in a nutshell, I ruined her careers mm -hmm. with my selfish lifestyle. Um, uh, and, and basically, just absolutely just destroyed uh, who she was at that point in time. Mm -hmm. um, but God had a better plan. And so... Um, you know, I lost my wife. I, um, I, I couldn't stay home. I was just, uh, I, was, I was an absolute mess. But she knew I had something in me mm -hmm. that was good. Yes. You know, and I thank God that, that uh, she believed in me. And, and, and God used her to save my life many times, too, out in the drug world. But um, uh, what happened was uh, we had divorced, and I would went to prison. And both of us had said, we're done. And, I mean, both of us could count on our finger why we're done. Mm -hmm. And it will never happen again. Mm -hmm. And uh, and so I pursued the face of God and, and, and wanted His will for me because I knew how to call on my life, too. And it's important that uh, your spouse uh, be connected in that. It's not just a one-man show. Right. Uh, and so uh, I, I really sought the Lord, really sought the Lord. And uh, while I was in prison, I actually had a dream, briefly, um, and the Lord, that's when the Lord started to reveal himself to her. I told my family, I'm done with drugs. I'm done with alcohol. I know my words, they, are, they mean nothing. Yes. But I'm following you Jesus. That trust. And you'll mm -hmm. see when I get out. You'll yes, see because I'm yes. following Jesus. Amen. And, um, and when my, my wife used to say, okay, okay, can we talk about something else? And my ex-wife at the time, can we talk about something besides God? For me, it was only, only yes. God. Uh -huh. And she wasn't, <laughs> <yet>. <laughs> she wasn't saved yet. She wasn't saved yet. And so uh, I actually had a dream that, uh, that she was talking to somebody in a parking lot, and then there was almost a car wreck. And um, I called home that next day and just said, look, I had a dream, and I believe it was from God. Uh, and I told her this dream, and she, her response to me was something had just happened in a parking lot, and there was something that just was a, could have happened with a wreck for the vehicle. So it was, it was the Lord. It was the dream, basically, oh, but absolutely. it was real. It happened. Oh, it absolutely. Happened. Yes. There was no mm -hmm. questions. Uh, and, and her response to me was, this relationship that you have with God is getting out of hand. Yes. And so, but that was how God was revealing himself to her. Yes. And bringing exactly. her along. And then she ended up getting saved, and the Lord revealed himself personally to her. And he began to restore us uh, to a place where... Um, we have a better marriage than, I mean, to me, I, I think that we have an absolute um, great marriage. She is the best person that I think could be at my side. Uh, she balances me out. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we are uh, both of integrity and, and uh, just have, uh, we have a, a blessed marriage, a blessed family, blessed children. Um, the Lord basically restored our life. We have a home now. We have a new baby girl. Um, um, and, and so uh, our kids, you know, are, are well. I'm a 16-year-old is doing well. My 12-year-old is doing well. And, and it's just only God has restored that section of my life. I mean, in the middle of a recession, we've bought a home. Mm -hmm. uh, God has... Blessing you. Yeah, God has, uh, beyond me, uh, taken me places that I never could have imagined. Or taken yourself. 
Yeah, no, yes. you can take yourself there. Well, you know, I was earlier on in the show when I first opened the show. Um, it kind of reminds me of what you said now about the relationship with your wife is so much better. And mm -hmm. you know, I was saying in the beginning of the show how it's because of my relationship with God that mm -hmm. has enabled me to have better relationships with others. Mm -hmm. And because of the, when we keep our eyes on Him and live mm -hmm. by His will, like you said, mm -hmm. and and He He and He can love others through us. Right. You know, our relationships are better, richer, deeper, more healthy. You yeah, know, most and that's definitely. what you're saying with your wife. You know, it just sounds like when your right. family and the community, and mm -hmm. and now you have this. You're a senior pastor, and you know, and you've written a book. I know. I don't know if you want to talk about that, but I mean, it's just amazing. Yeah, um, God has just done beyond what I could have even ever imagined. I mean, just to even be homeowners. I mean, in eight and a yeah. half years, God has restored. Uh, <laughs> what the canker worm had taken for 28 years. Mm -hmm. And and so we have, a, um, you know, by the grace of God, uh, uh, I am a pastor of a church. Um, and so it's just, it's it's for His glory. Amen. You know, it's to go before Him and declare His name and say, you know what, God can take a broken down uh, sinner in bondage and put His spirit upon Him and put His spirit in Him and, and make Him uh, a voice and make anybody for that matter that will answer the call of voice to prove God likes to work through people. Yes, yes he, he does. He reveals himself through people. And it reminds me of the scripture that he will replace the years the locusts have eaten. Mm -hmm. And that's that's you. Yeah. That's your story. Yeah, he's... Yeah. Um, and not just replaced. I mean, is it even say replace or restore? Restore the years. The yeah, have he's eaten. restore. And, and, yeah. and so it's we, we are absolutely blessed. Um, just the people that are around us. The uh, God has restored my reputation in the community. Mm -hmm. I mean, I left for prison, uh, County's Most Wanted, and now basically I am trusted in uh, homes across the mother load. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. just God has restored my uh, my name in the community, and it's all for His glory. You know, people come up, uh, you know, and, and say, hey, you know, I heard you really gave your life to the Lord, and it was sincere. Um, you know, you're welcome to come in and minister in the jail. Uh, yes. You know, I mean, just... Uh, well, you remember the scripture, the story in John, um, when the John, I'm sorry, Jesus and his disciples were walking by um, the blind man, remember? And mm -hmm. one of the disciples said to him, Jesus, uh, why, you know, was, why was this man born blind? Mm -hmm. Was he born blind because he sinned or did his parents mm -hmm. sin? Like it was a mm -hmm. punishment because mm -hmm. of sin, right? right? And Jesus said... Neither, nor yeah. his parents, nor him sinned. He was he was blind, born blind, so that my so God's glory may be seen through him. Amen. Because later Jesus heals him, right? Yeah. And that's there you go. I this, mean, yeah. you, it was all your choices that put you where you were for right. sure. But God allowed those things to happen so that His glory could be displayed in your life. Now, a Amen. You know, Amen. And and so that I can minister to people that have been yes. in yes. a like place. Exactly. In, I don't, it doesn't. To me, there's no drug, there's no alcohol, there's no prison cell, there's no place in the earth uh, that is past God going and finding you. Mm -hmm. uh, God is is literally a few words away from you, and it's it, the the faith is 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 in our hearts. It's it's at our mouth. All we have to do is confess Jesus Christ is the Son of the Living God. So you you um, mentioned to me. I love this. You said this. You know, we were talking about your church, and and you said that you're the. The Lord has laid on your heart about restoring people. Mm -hmm. It's not about the numbers. It's all that. All that. It's about restoring people. Right. So tell me where your heart is now in the Lord with that. How is He using you? What's your? Where's your passion? Well, the Lord had to correct me there for a while, um, and and so it was. You know, it's hard not to be about the numbers because we like to uh, link our success to numbers. Yes. Mm -hmm. And for me, I thank God it took quite a long time, but now I don't even really count who comes in, how many people are in the church anymore. Uh, what I'm looking for is I am looking to get down inside of what I see God inside of somebody. I don't spend time focusing on all the failures in their life. Mm -hmm. See, I want to get down into what God has placed in their life, and I want to draw that up out of them. Because if we can get the anointing of God that's placed inside of a Christian that is struggling and get that anointing flowing up out of them, that anointing in itself is going to shatter every yoke that's on that person. Mm -hmm. And so my vision is to build people, to get people into the presence of God, to preach truth, to preach against sin, to preach uh, uh, that that people can be used in a high realm uh, in God's kingdom if they'll just yield themselves completely to pay the cost. Mm -hmm. um, and so what I look for is uh, the potential in people. And I speak to the potential. I look for what I discern that God has shown me that's in their life, and I go after that thing. Mm -hmm. and, and, I, I, and, and my vision is to stir that up. You know, the vision of the church is to bring people into an understanding that God is not far away. Yes. You don't have to yell to Him. 
God is so fills the heavens and the earth that he is literally, uh, we can't, there's nowhere we can't go. He's right here right now. Amen. <laughs> Amen. And, and so that's the vision of the church is to bring people into a real relationship of how personal God wants to be with them. That's not just right. the pastor, that's not just right. the prophet. That's right. Not just the, that's right. God wants to be personal with every single one of his children. And, uh, and, and also to get them into the place and their calling where they're, uh, where they're called to. And like you said in Restoration, uh, I, I found that um, there hasn't been a lot of salvations that have come through our church, and not mm -hmm. that we don't desire that. Mm -hmm. I have found that God has taken a lot of people that have been cast away, have been overlooked, have been uh, that maybe they don't people don't see the potential in them they've been hurt they've been hurt by a church uh it, it doesn't matter to me if god's got a call on your life it's irrevocable i'm looking for it and i want to get you to where you need to be inside of god to get you flourishing i don't believe christians need to be living inside of a place that is uh, a, a half a half full cup mm -hmm. god wants us to get to the potential that he's called us to mm -hmm. and Amen. so that's kind of my vision yeah, I love what you said because the call is not the call, like when people say the call of God, it's not like just only the pastors get the call right. or only someone who's right. amazing, some tel televangelist or right. some amazing speaker, that they're the only ones who are. We're all called of God. Right. We're, we're all called of God. And it's just it, it's just helping people to, to hear that and know that and yeah. trust that. And like yeah. you said, then bring it out. Yeah, yeah. that's awesome. Yeah, so. That's awesome. I love what you're saying. I love yeah. it. I love it. It's so awesome. I just I'm so thankful to to um, to have gotten to know you today and um, to just hear your story and and to um, just see the blessings and I see the passion and I see the I see the Lord in you. Well, and that's, that's awesome. That's what um, and that blesses me. And thanks yeah. for giving me an opportunity to share. Uh, you know, the name of the Lord. And, oh, yes, thank you. Jesus. So. That's what this show is all about. Yeah. I want people to see the real God that's real living today. Amen. Right, that's right. And I always read Jesus Calling, so bear with me on this. Um, today's February 27th, and this is written as if Jesus is talking right to you, because he is. It says, keep your eyes on me, exclamation point. Waves of adversity are washing over you, and you feel tempted to give up. As your circumstances consume more and more of your attention, you are losing sight of me. Yet I am with you always, holding you by your right hand. I am fully aware of your situation. I am mm. fully aware of your situation. Mm. And I will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able to bear. Mm. Your gravest danger is worrying about tomorrow. If you try to carry tomorrow's burdens today, you will stagger under the load and eventually fall flat. You must discipline yourself to live within the boundaries of today. Mm. It is in the present moment that I walk closest to you, helping you carry your burdens. Keep your focus on my presence in the presence. Amen. Mm -hmm. That was good. Amen. Carrying burdens. He carries them for us if we allow him to. Amen. And getting in that presence, too. Mm -hmm. like he, Living in his presence where that refreshing is and uh, relying on him in all things. You know, It's all about the intimacy. Yeah. That's the foundation, don't you think? Yeah. Oh, it's absolutely intimacy. God's not... It's, it's about being the church. Yes, and being exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so let's not do church. Let's yeah. be church. Right. <laughs> That's yeah. right. Okay, good. Well, we're ending now, and thank you so much for tuning in. What a blessing, and I uh, hope to see you next week, and have a blessed week. You're watching Amador County's local television network, TSPN. Common Ground Senior.